When color photography comes out, people think of it as being very artificial at first. Serious, sincere, sort of authentic images were in black and white. After World War II, film for making color prints became available. People's associations with photography began to transform into color. All silver-based photographic processes started out as blue-sensitive. Blue and white photograph as the same value. So when you look at 19th century landscape photographs and you wonder, why didn't they have any clouds in those days? It's because the white of the sky and the blue of the sky photograph as the same value. In order to have color film, you must have black and white film that will record all colors. The sensitizing of emulsions was done by actually adding dyes to the liquid emulsion. So it's called dye sensitizing. Frederick Ives was instrumental in understanding that black and white film had to be dye sensitized in order to get a record from which you could make color images. It's really complicated. <laughs> One of the earliest ways to make a color photograph was to make three negatives of the same scene. From the negative, make a lantern slide. Now, a lantern slide is a, is a positive transparency, a slide. The positive slides were then put into three different projectors. The filter that was used to take that original negative was placed in front of the projector. When you projected these three different color images upon each other, it produced a full color image. Another way of doing an additive color plate is by having a, a transparency that is made up of either dots or lines using the red, the violet, and the green color. The dots that do the color mixing, they're so fine that you don't see them as dots, and they're so close to each other that they do their color mixing virtually by your eye. In England, James Clerk Maxwell did his initial experiments with the perception of color in the 1850s, and he came up with an interesting way of, of demonstrating additive color mixing. This is um, Maxwell's color wheel, and it's an additive color mixing machine. If you look at your iPhone with a loop, or your television screen, or your computer screen with a loop, get in very close, you'll see the same red and violet and green dots or lines. The autochrome was invented by Auguste and Louis Lumiere, the first process that could be manufactured and made available to the public. The Lumiere brothers are probably best known for the invention of the motion picture camera. The autochrome is, like the daguerreotype, a process that produces a single positive image, a one-of-a-kind image. However, it's a transparency, so you have to view it through transmitted light. And so the autochrome, uh, the Jolie plate, these early additive screen plates uh, enabled people to take a picture in their camera with a single plate that allowed the finished product to be something you can hold in your hand, hold up to a window, and see a full color image. The other way of making a color photograph is by the subtractive method. Subtractive color processes are done by using magenta, yellow, and cyan images, which are physically layered on top of each other. Chromogenic color photography was, was invented in the 1930s, and the, the process that really ushered in this, this entire movement of color was the Kodachrome process. It really begins with the work of Manz and Godowski uh, at the Kodak Research Labs. Chromogenic color prints are, are made with a gelatin emulsion that's based on silver and there are many layers. When the film or the paper is being developed, each layer releases the dye that it needs on the cyan, the yellow, or magenta layer. During the processing, the silver is actually removed, leaving only the color behind. And so you end up with a full color picture that was made 
with light going into the paper or onto the film simultaneously. It is rocket science. And so the, the chromogenic color process becomes the predominant process used throughout the 20th century, and it's still being used today. Uh, but those wheels are starting to slow down. Once chromogenic color is gone, we will never, ever, ever see it happen again because it, it requires an incredible uh, infrastructure. Once it's gone, it's gone.